живые. Ciao from Pietro, ciao from the UK. This is the Independence and this is the limited edition, the home of independent watchmaking. We strive to take some interesting guests week in, week out with our uh, co-host Johnny McKellaron from Ireland, the uh, editor of the limited edition as well. And today is no exception. Today we have a friend and uh, somebody that is truly inspiring. I know inspiring is a word that is used a lot in the creative environment. But this guy is one of those that has really man managed to uh, uh, leave a, a strong trace, a great mark in, uh, in, in making independent watchmaking really, really interesting across the years. And doing so with uh, brands like a brand like Louis Erard that was known for his uh, its very understated approach in the past, and now is known for his uh, massively created and original approach. So a complex story to tell that we try to make simple with the help of my friend Johnny from Ireland that I'm going to introduce to you right now. And Johnny, what I guess we have today. The, uh, uh, the delegate of the board of Louis Arad, uh, Mr. Manuel Emsch, will be with us today. Absolutely. Uh, one of those uh, ca characters who is the, the, the kind of the energy uh, behind uh, a number of brands that we represent on the limited edition. And uh, he has that uh, a dynamic character who's at the, the center of, uh, of all things. Whenever we go to uh, Geneva, we go to meet uh, Manuel. We're we're not just visiting Manuel to see one brand. We're visiting to see two, three brands. And uh, so, uh, one of the brands that uh, that we I, I refer to, uh, there's been a very successful collaboration uh, between uh, two two of uh, of Manuel's brands, and it's uh, it's fantastic to be uh, talking about one of those today because it's a runaway success. This is a editions that sell out as soon as word hits the ground and uh, so Absolutely. we welcome uh, manuel Emch. hello <laughs> hi johnny hi pietro happy to be with you today hi manuel thank you for making this time because i know you're traveling and uh, uh and it's not always easy to uh, to find a time i hope we can make this uh, this chat enjoyable for you we were struggling a little bit in defining you, uh, Manuel. I've known you for a long time and uh, I've seen you, uh, uh, you know, doing many different things because you're one of those restless souls that live and feed off creativity in a, in a big way and in a real way, not as an abstract concept. How would you define yourself? That would be interesting. Oops, that's a, that's a, that's a challenging uh, way to start. Well, look, I, I think I'm, a, as you said, I'm a pretty restless uh, person. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm driven by the need to create, to, to, to do things, to, to, to push boundaries. Uh, it was interesting because the other day we, we had this discussion and, and, and I was actually asked how many watches I have created, co-created, inspired, designed or whatever in my career. And I came out to close, one, uh, close to 1,000. So I think... Uh, that's pretty a lot over the wow. last 20, 25 years. But uh, yeah, I, I'm too, I just like to, to push boundaries. I just like to create things. I like to, to build businesses. I like to, 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 you know, to innovate. So I, I can't really, really define myself. I'm, I'm, as you say, pretty restless, always on the move, always trying to, 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 to figure out what could be the next interesting, unexpected thing. And I'm, Probably also somebody very, very sensitive and, and, and very much, um, you know, feeling and in, feeling the trends and what's coming or what's what's new. You have landed now your talent at the service of uh, independent watchmaking, and we'll go into the details. But like all of us, I think, or most of us, uh, you're not perfect. You also have a corporate background. How was that corporate background? How is how is that relevant? How is that important uh, these days in what you do? 
well, it is pretty much. I mean, look, I, I, I was lucky enough to, to, I don't know if this is lucky, but if you look at it from the perspective, but I, I, I was lucky enough to get the, uh, the chance to, to run brands on a very young age. Um, probably one of the youngest age because I was, uh, I think it was 29 back then when, um, when I was, um, well, I wouldn't say I was offered the helm of, of Jacques Edouard because I more or less pushed to get it. Um, so, yeah, I started in Swatch Group in, uh, in the year 2000. Um, I was a little bit working in the industry on and off before uh, in some different countries. And, um, yeah, I, I, I found it pretty, bit, pretty, bit, pretty quickly in a boring uh, and a pretty corporate environment. But back then, we never have to forget that Swatch Group was run by an entrepreneur, a very uh, restless entrepreneur with a lot of vision, uh, late Mr. Hayek. And... Mr. Hayek uh, managed the company uh, in a totally different way from what it is today. Um, and brands were very much independent. Uh, brands were very much autonomous. And I was lucky enough probably to be the most autonomous and independent uh, person within the whole Swatch group. Because when I took over Jacques Edo, um, back then there was, was not much of the company left. I think we were, there were two people. Uh, first year, two hundred thousand turnover. I always remember, and it was of no interest uh, of, for the group, and that gave me a lot of independence. The group was pretty much independent in some of the uh, brands, and, and especially in the, in the high-end brands. But I would say I was probably the most independent within the group, and I enjoyed it as much as it lasted. Okay, and I decided to leave the the day when I understood that my um, and the company grown over the, the 10 years I, I spent there. But I, I left the, the day when I understood that there was le the more I will continue, the less independence I will have. It's and funny that you say that. Yes, I, I think, Pietro, if you just mind me, don't mind me saying about uh, Jacques Edros being the one Swatch brand that really does have that uh, aura of independence about it. So you've obviously left... Uh, to a, a firm uh, imprint on on the Jacques Rose brand, and uh, so yeah, well, it's, uh... I could design the brand from scratch. Uh, I mean, obviously, there was a very important history back in the 18th century, but mm -hmm. when I took it over, there was nothing left. I mean, we we we, we rebuilt a brand inspired by by its uh, incredible history, but basically all the codes, everything, every design. Uh, every uh, identity was built back then, and it was. I was think. I think it was built with a lot of understanding of how to build identities, that it lasted and last still lasts today. Because at the end of the day, the identity of Jacques Edouard that we still see, even if it's um, diluting more and more, is built pretty much what we put in place uh, 25, 23 years, uh, 23 years ago. Very true. And then in your, you know, excursions, you you went through some very super creative projects. Like I remember the time of uh, Roman Jerome, and then uh, you you ended up in a place now to revive, resurrect. You choose the term. Uh, you've taken a brand that was had a spell of success because of the big crisis that happened in two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine. Uh, for offering exceptionally affordable quality watchmaking. But that, that same brand lost a little bit the appeal across the years because that concept became a little bit redundant when people wanted to hear more good news, more positive news, you know, rather than, you know, having to, 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 to kind of be too conservative. Don't be too polite, Pietro. I mean, not just a little bit, a go lot. For, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the brand, I mean, look, I... As, I mean, may, maybe too, because obviously we, we talked about my title, which is what it is. I mean, uh, just we had to throw a title and we figured out that the more complicated the title is, the, the, the more serious it makes it. Anyway, I, I, I'm I still an independent soul. I have my own little uh, company where I basically do what I like to do, create products, create strategies, uh, develop brands. And... I've been throughout my, my, my career in the industry always a bit frustrated with one point that it's nice to make high-end watchmaking. It, it's beautiful, it's exciting, there's a lot of, of crafts involved, but somehow it's also a bit 
you know, disconnected from maybe the capacity of a lot of customers. I mean, it's it, it's not in, in, accessible to everyone. Um, not saying that uh, Louis R. is, but but let's say it's it, it, there's always a sort of barrier, a financial barrier into into the brands. And when I was running both um, uh, Jacques Edouard uh, and uh, Roma Jerome, people always loved what we made in terms of creativity, concepts, uh, craftsmanship, uh, name it. But there has always been a little bit of a criticism uh, towards the kind of movements we used because none of the movements were actually in-house made movements. Okay, we can debate how much uh, Frédéric Piguet, part of the Swatch Group, is inside the same the same group. So some, you can still debate it's, it's in-house. But the reality has it that we had, in both cases, actually not our own movements. And this has always been a sort of, um, you know, a, a little bit of a barrier for people. So, and, and, and I always told myself that, well, ha not having to care, to, to be too concerned with this and really let uh, the, 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 my creativity, my ideas, concepts flow uh, also would mean maybe a bit more affordable price point. And, um, well, in my, um, in my work as, a, as, as basically a, fireman in the watch industry, I, I came across a brand that was pretty much on, on fire, but not for the reason we know today. Uh, it was on fire because, because uh, Louis R, as you mentioned, was a very, very interesting starting concept because it, they were the first to offer what they back then thought was, was very unique, is, is, is offering the most affordable Swiss-made mechanical watch on the market. Um, but price is not a concept that you can protect from competition. Uh, you can always find people who can undercut prices. You can always find organizations, corporations, groups that are more verticalized and therefore also able to offer better price. And then you simply also have other companies which have the volume to be competitive. And the problem of, of Louis R was that the initial idea of this value proposition uh, based on Swiss made watches was very, very strong um, and was very successful. But at the same time, they, and, and combined with a very Jacques Hidro design at the beginning, which is also a reason why I joined it because I wanted to understand why they got so much inspiration from what I did 20 years back. Anyway, cut a long story short, um, with a good design and a good price. Um, and but so I was it, saying that's a good that's a good point actually that I uh, actually is good that you stressed because there is definitely a, a DNA there a common DNA no, in a word. Definitely, I mean, look, I remember in two thousand four or five, maybe it was four, when they brought out the first regulator, which we can we 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 can say okay, there is some some sort of design philosophy. I I wasn't pretty happy about it when I was running. Mm -hmm. I felt like why this why this brand with this price point is is, 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 is is taking our ideas and enough for them for a more affordable price point so maybe there was a bit of a that was a bit of a revenge thing where I where by joining the, the company uh, on the side no no being being you've taken over I've taken over no but the reality the, 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 the thing is that they lost themselves in this concept which was a great mm -hmm. concept but the concept got pretty quickly copied. And obviously, like often, they instead of reassessing it and, and trying to make it to develop it, they just basically try to fight against the market by offering much broader products, by diversifying into all sorts of um, colors, materials, designs, movements, uh, quartz, and so on, and then end up in a situation where the brand just lost its traction, lost its identity, and, and basically, basically became something very generic. And the problem when they are ge ge generic, then, well, you, you just, you know, the market eats you up, eats you alive. Because, because when you're in, in this need of uh, or being dependent on distribution, well, the distribution knows very well uh, that they are in, in the driving seats and they basically squeeze the best out of, uh, or they squeeze whatever they can, can out of you. And this is what I found with Louis R. But at the same time, what I really was interested in the brand was that uh, price positioning, um, which is very, challenge, very challenging for me and I like challenges, but also the fact that this philosophy of value proposition could be uh, pushed further 
uh, not just limited to the to the movement or the product, but really integrating everything um, from arts and crafts to philosophies to design to people to 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 even uh, distribution marketing um, to way of, of tackling uh, the business in general. That's a long answer. Oh yeah, and it's fair, fair to say that the, the choice of Luera of choosing us, you know, for yeah. example, as a, as a partner was probably part of, uh, of that strategy and we're still uh, yeah. grateful about that. And we, jo Johnny, we have uh, shared the, 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 the journey with the manual so far and it's, it was pretty unbelievable how Manuel managed to turn things uh, around with uh, with this brand. And uh, shall we say, of the collaborations were the big, big uh, ingredients that changed things around. Um, or what, 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 what would you say is the one element? Yeah, definitely the uh, the, the collaborations with uh, the different watchmakers, different designers, different. Uh, from from different strands of, of the industry too. So you got people like uh, uh, Eric Giroux, you had the Vianney Halter, you had Atelier A, all coming from different angles. Uh, the the famous, the uh, absolutely probably the best known of all is the Alan Silverstein collections that have uh, so, so distinctive, instantly recognisable. The, the Simple but absolutely powerfully effective, and uh, that really gave give because I, I I have known Louis Arar going back uh, to my to whenever I was just entering this industry in around two thousand four, and I always had an admiration for him. But like a lot of brands in that time, and uh, Manuel has just used the word you know generic that there was a. You know, they didn't really have a direction, if you like. They had an idea, but they didn't really have the... You know, whether it was uh, the crossover from the old world pre-internet to the new, where we had this uh, dynamic platform to promote and uh, showcase uh, the watches. Um, I, I think that uh, you know, Louis Arar was a brand that was waiting for someone to take the, the wheel and steer it uh, in a new direction. And Manuel, there's no doubt about it. Uh, these collections that I've referred to are uh, are amazing. I think, Pietro, you have a few of them there uh, on your own yeah, screen. We can, with, yes, with exactly. We can, and, we can uh, briefly, uh, before I ask the next question to Manuel, we can kind of uh, revisit the, 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 the story and the history of these uh, collaborations with the Alan Silverstein uh, collection. Of course, uh, um, Le Regulateur with Second Second was something really, really crazy as well that I particularly loved. The collaboration with Massena Lab, with yeah. Label Monarch, um, uh, and the latest one, obviously, with our friend, common friend, the Horophile Ammer, uh, a really, really elegant interpretation of, uh, of Ammer, creative uh, input, uh, input there. Um, Manu, what do you feel, obviously, to the latest one, which is the Time Eater with uh, Konstantin Chekin, Konstantin Chekin, that has been uh, obviously linked to the limited edition for uh, for a long time as well as one of the most talented watchmakers, uh, independent watchmakers are out there. Can you point your finger, uh, Manuel, on one or two collaborations that really have uh, managed to change, to turn the tide for Louis Arard or that were particularly important and relevant for you? Uh, they, they all are to a certain extent quite uh, quite relevant, and and when, when we talk about métier d'art, um, obviously it's also a certain form of collaboration, and it's maybe not a designer, a watchmaker, an artist, or what, what, what I call uh, the watchmaking ecosystem, or in other words, my friends. Um, it's 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 a, it's an artist and it's a craftsman as well, so it's also a person behind, and I think a very uh interesting example is the last uh, uh, métier d'art that we, we, we did together with Bastien Chevalier, which is the wood marketry. But getting back to your question, what, I mean, there has been obviously game-changing um, products. Um, and I would say that the, the very first game-changing uh, product has been the collaboration with Anna, which, by the way, if I tell the story, you wouldn't believe it, but, but, but it's quite an interesting story because I joined, I joined, I was asked 
process the business model basically of Louis back in 2018. And um, back then, the, the, as I mentioned, the company was really in a bad uh, situation and the shareholders basically were considering closing down. Uh, today, I can say it without uh, too much uh, uh, negative things because the company is doing quite well. But back then, it was really like, okay, shall we give it another try or shall we stop? And um, they asked me to assess and, and, and come up with a business plan that could eventually um, eventually be a possibility to turn around and, and develop the company. And it was actually pretty easy to do for me because it was one of the strategies I've been already working with with RJ. Um, and as you know, collaborations is something I've been doing for quite a number of years. Uh, whether it's with video games, uh, Super Mario, whether it's with Marvel, which all these things that are a bit fashionable nowadays, but that we did 10 years back. And, yeah, every, um, every time I think I had a good idea, then I find out the manual already had it. That's, that's what yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10 like years ago. <laughs> Not all of them, not all of them. But, but there's been a, I, I would say for, 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 for one reason, maybe sometimes a bit too early. Maybe the timing on Luya is one of the best timings so far for me. Uh, but 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 we've done things often very, very early and maybe too early um, sometimes. But anyway, uh, how did the Alain Silberstein come along, which is a very, very important and I think the, the groundbreaking uh, um, product uh, or collaboration that changed everything is um, I had this idea of collaboration. It wasn't really 100% clearly set in my mind, but I, I was asked to join uh, Louis R in, in Basel um, one of my first meetings to meet their back then biggest client, which was the Japanese distributor, which was, I think, uh, accounting for the 40% of the remaining business back then, which it wasn't that, which was that, uh, that big. And I, uh, you know, they asked the CEO back then, CEO asked me, can you maybe just, you know, like sell a bit your, your strategy to, you know, make them, make them, you know, believe that it's good. So uh, anyway, I start to explain them a little bit the strategy and I understand very quickly that they are no interest in the strategy in general because they're just trying uh, to find a very, uh, I would say, respectful way to tell us to, well, to, to, yeah. to, to this is it, mm -hmm. we move on. And I understood that at this particular moment that if I don't pull out a joker, uh, Oops, good one. Sorry for the play. <laughs> for the uh, metaphor, pull out yeah. a joker, a good playing card out of my sleeve. It's going to be very. It's going to be impossible to turn around the company because I needed. Uh, you know, I couldn't lose uh, the forty percent of the business uh, as the company was already in a pretty difficult situation. Anyway, so I was like, okay, I need to find something a collaboration. I had this idea of collaborations. It wasn't clear in my mind 100%. So I need to find a collaboration, something that works in Japan. And obviously, it, somehow it was easy to, I can say this today, it was easy to think of Alain because I did the collaboration with Alain with RJ back in the 2012, I think. Um, which was the uh, biggest. Of yeah, the you identified that you, you were missing some kind of. Uh... Source some kind of spice. Yeah, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need an impact. To be back. Mm -hmm. I need an impactful. Uh, so I just dropped the name and say, "I'm one of the first collaborations because I was talking about watchmakers and so on." So, so it was pretty clear of the strategy, but not name, not named. Uh, I didn't have specific yeah. names because I didn't want to sell some somebody I've never talked uh, talked to because uh, you know uh, sometimes it's it's better to keep some of the ideas. Uh, uh, to, to, for when, whenever they're ready. So basically, I just dropped the name Alain Silberstein and it had the impact that I expected it will have. Is basically they were saying, yeah, yeah, okay, and, and they ordered a few, few pieces, but I understood that I had to deliver quickly because by the end of 2018 was their end of fiscal year. And if we wouldn't deliver b before the end of the fiscal year, probably they would have stopped. Anyway, it was uh, so I dropped the name. They were all excited, all happy. Placed a few orders, some of the generic watches, and, and, and happily walked away. And I just took my phone and called up Alain, and I said, uh, "Hey, Alain, how are you?" And he said, oh, "I'm good, I'm good." Uh, you know, we started chatting a little bit, and then I said to him, "Well, do you want to do a collaboration?" And he said, uh, "Yeah, why not? Uh, with whom?" And I said, "With Louis Erhard. And he said, "Who?" And I said, "Louis Erhard. <laughs> I don't know this brand. I was like, it doesn't matter. And he said, okay, because it's you, let's do it. 
yeah, and so how yeah, close is that? We, yeah. we know yeah. that this has been, I would say, the, the ball that made everything uh, rolling um, has been very, very important. Um, another very, very important element for me has been the first métier d'art, and, and, and particularly the one with Donzé, with, Cal, uh, with, Don, with Calron Donzé, which has also been my first dial maker for, for Jacques Edouard. And yeah. there's always... Yeah, been... just, just to explain the two different axes. You have one axe, which is the collaborations, where you, you, you basically entice the real lovers of watchmaking, because for as much of an idol, V&A Alter could be to you, to me, and to, and to Johnny, Obviously, you are really targeting the, the people that are heavily into watchmaking. So to get that independent watchmaking kind of uh, family vibe. But then on yeah. the other side, uh, from your corporate days and, and from your experience in managing brands like Roman Jerome, you have a very solid network of the best of the best of the suppliers out there that are sometimes not known by their name. So your intuition was to, let's get these, these guys out there. Let's get them known as well by the name. Let's see if this can actually seduce uh, part of that same clientele that is into the independence. And uh, so this, this is something you have, you have uh, worked along the way, as you said, or it was a clear concept? No, no, was clear. It's clear. Actually, the strategy is much bigger than this. I mean, we, we only, I would say, triggered maybe... Uh, I would say a small percentage of what is in my idea with, with the brand. And I mean, first and foremost, we only have a classical line um, today. It doesn't mean that we want to stop there. Secondly, we, 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 we only started to roll out some of the collaborations and specifically in fields that were ob obviously, I don't like to use the word easy because none of them are easy, but basically were quite evident uh, because they would trigger the, they would trigger the first let's say row uh, first wave of or first row of people who understand watchmaking i mean that was the idea but we obviously want to go uh, further with it we want to bring much more other uh, creative people in the game um, at the same we want to bring artisans and craftsmen into the game we want to push them and we, we and I, I think this is what i love about luia is the fact that it's a very collaborative platform that there is the brand, if we can say, if we can call it the brand, there is the label we are, and then we, we just invite, you know, people to join us, uh, to co-create, to create sometimes, to, 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 to inspire us some other times, to produce, to craft uh, all sorts of different ways of creating some of the best accessible watches on the market. And regulator, which has been your selective weapon for the last 20 years, that you find yourself reinventing it over and over again, which is, yes, uh, which is really yeah. it's good. It's, it's good if you can bring it down to a, to, to, to a base denominator. I mean, the, the regulator somehow has been the essence and the starting point of Lear back in 1929, even though I don't consider the history is, 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 is that of an importance. It still has roots and, and still has. I hate this word, Sorry. DNA, um, mm -hmm. and we just try to take the regulator because it is a bit the essence of the brand to, and, and build it around there. But, but, but again, it's, it's one element among a lot of elements of, 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 of among a lot of, of legal stones without making uh, hidden advertising. It's the playing field because in the end, all the collaborations are, are you know, the interpretation of a regulator by the chosen, uh, chosen artist. Yeah, absolutely. And, Thank you. Can I can I say thank you, uh, Johnny? Maybe you want to uh, give some space to the lovely people that are listening live. This will be recorded as well. We're live with uh, Manuel Emch from uh, Louis Erard, and we're trying to disclose and unveil some of the secrets behind the success of uh, Louis Erard. Sure. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, posting some of the comments that have been coming in from uh, Cadaver Films, from uh, our, our great friend uh, Eli Fayon and... Uh, and, and a few others. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. It's uh, it's always uh, fantastic to know that there's uh, uh, that interaction going on. And uh, and Cadaver for your little bits of information and uh, how you perceive the brand to actually having made your first purchase. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Manuel had a, did you did you manage to read that comment, Manuel? Because you were you were. Uh, well, I, I read the comments of Ellie, obviously, okay. which which. Yeah. which has proven has proven uh, to be not only a, a, a very uh, knowledgeable uh, 
collector, but also a big supporter of what I do. And, and I just take the advantage, which I don't have all the time to say a big thank you for, 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 but that's, for him. That's the all beauty. The yeah. Sorry, Manuel. The beauty of what we do, what you do, is that, so it's always tough, you know, when you start talking about things that are extremely niche, with ideas that are extremely, extremely creative. But then you touch some souls of people that are extremely intelligent, extremely nice, and you build relationships that you wouldn't build otherwise. And, uh, you know, our friend Ellie, uh, but also Doruk that I see here, uh, are some of, uh, some of those. Well, Dorok just made a comment about the execution of the Metier d'Art. I, yeah. I agree, and, 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 and sometimes I have a little bit of a frustration with the Metier d'Art in comparison to the collaborations. Obviously, I don't like this word, uh, but the collaborations are easier, um, even though they're not in the execution and sometimes they're not in yeah. handling the person with whom we collaborate. Uh, but, but they're, I mean... The complexity is, is 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 let's say it's 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 more accessible um, in all sorts of words because some of the craftsmen um, and this is something that I really really is really important for me and I would like to stress it too. I mean, for me, the metier d'art are actually pieces that are almost show pieces. Um, there are pieces that have no commercial logic. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to, and I would love to roll out all the traditional arts and crafts, not just the full fire enamel, not just the rose engine turn, not the wood marquetry, but maybe the cloisonné, the paillonné, the, the champ levé, the flanqué, the, all these uh, traditional crafts that most of the brands just top up on complications to, to justify uh, their value. And they become somehow a, a niche of a niche of a niche. Although these people who, who, who execute or, or craft these pieces, they, in my consideration, should have at least as much visibility and a recognition than some of the more uh, known watchmaker we work with. And, and I take the particular example of, of Bastien Chevalier, and I, I take the opportunity to say so because I think he almost burnt out 17 times since we started working with him. So I owe him this, uh, the, this uh, little homage. I mean, he... He, he he just manages to, to to produce two dials a month for us, and he has only two clients aside of uh, Louis. Ar, I think this is Vachon Constantin, and he he agreed to 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 to, to produce this dial for less than thousand five hundred Swiss francs because that's the price I pay him uh, because I insisted so much, um, and as you can see, I mean we, because I wanted to have this in the collection. And uh, he, he is willing to walk the, to, to, to walk the talk, the promise he made, but it's very hard for him. And I take the advantage to just say thank you for all the people who in or outside supported the project so far. Yeah, Johnny, if you can share quickly my screen, I want to show the uh, excellence uh, marketry, uh, which is definitely an extraordinary piece and probably the one that has uh, got my jaw dropping uh, more than, uh, you know, even, you know, when you launched the Vienna Alter piece, I was blown away, the checking, of course. Uh, but on this, on this one, uh, with the, um, uh, the, 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 the I, knew, I knew exactly, you know, what your artisan, which other brands your artisan was working for. And I know exactly how, you know, the, the price is that one of these uh, techniques can fetch when uh, on, uh, on one of the bigger, bigger brands. Uh, I've worked like you for bigger brands, and I know that these stars that are unknown, unsung heroes, the artisans, uh, they do a great job for uh, some of these um, very important maisons. So this is a, this is a piece I wanted to show because, like you say, Manuel is uh, is emblematic of what you are trying to do and uh, the depth you're trying to to achieve from the point of view of um, of the techniques and the uh, the finishing of your pieces and the creation of extraordinary dials. Um, I encourage as well, if you're watching this, you want to ask any questions to, uh, to Manuel, feel free to do so. Of course, for those that are watching this recorded, uh, just send an email to me or Johnny and we'll uh, connect with, uh, with Manuel. Manuel, can we project ourselves to the, to the future? So we have explored a little bit what you've been doing. We know the present. The present is a present of great success. The collaboration with Cheiki was... Uh, I know for a fact, uh, as you explained, a, a massive success that you're trying to 
to spill out in small doses because you don't want to overdo it either. What is the future from the uh, collaboration side, Métier d'art, and if I can ask, orological side? Well, uh, look, it's, uh, it's, let's say it this way. I like to, 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 to build brands with the same, let's take this allegory with, with like when you, when you throw a rock into water by waves, okay? In all fields, it has to be all, almost organic. I, I'm, I, I can say it, and I'm very happy to say we, we today we do 4,000 watches a year. We're actually pretty transparent on what we do um, because I think this is part of, 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 of a new philosophy as well. And I'm not interested and it's in. And it's part of being independent as well. It is. And, and I'm you not can, really. You too, can say what you do. <laughs> I can say, I can say I'm, I have the freedom to speak for, and, and, and walk the talk as well. And I'm not interested in growing, um, you know, more business, more watches. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's it, it's really our aim. But what I would like really to do is to explore new fields. You know, we we've we've. I think again, as I mentioned, in the metier d'art, there's a whole uh, field of, of of excellence that hasn't been touched. In the in the real in in the field of maybe. Uh, you know, as I say, I've, I've done a bit of the Jacques Edo uh, part uh, with the excellence. I'm still missing the RJ part on the sports line. So this is another thing I want to I want to explore. I want to bring in a bit more, you know, a bit, bit more crazy, uh, crazy stuff, a bit more out of the beaten track uh, stories, a bit more, a bit more generational icons. And obviously, I also want to explore because the two criticism that I, I can hear, um, and that's very interesting because it's the same that I faced uh, 10 or, or, or 20 years back, is well, aside of a little bit of the sickness of, of, of the case, which, which we, we know, we, but which is a reality because of the movements we use for the time being. And we wanted to be sure that we have the best, most reliable movement on the market and, and the best. Uh, if not, uh, or at least more of the now best. You're on a 42 millimeters normally, or 39? When 39 and 42 in terms of size, but we're a bit. Uh, but obviously, the movement used the Celita gives a certain thickness to the to the product. But the good news is we have 0 0.1 percent return rate, and which is I think oh, yeah. uh, unprecedented. Oh, yeah. We can we can uh, we can uh, we can you we, we can be good witnesses because uh, several yes. dozens of Louis and uh, nothing comes back. Yeah, but the thickness is what like 12, 12 millimeters. Yeah, a little bit, uh, 11, 11, 5, I think something like this. But 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 I mean this is, a, I would say this is a little problem that we are adjusting and that we need to adjust with by, by uh, with certain movements. But it's a given, and that for me was the most important. But then on the other side. The, the, the one criticism that some people uh, sometimes make, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to hear uh, what, what my collectors or what people uh, have to say about the brand is, how about some specific special movements, okay? Um, now we, we're sitting back in the same, <laughs> the same logic than, as I said, 10 or 20 years uh, ago, and I want to experiment. Um, I want to experiment different movements. I want to experiment signature mu movements. I want to experiment the same... Um, I would say the, the same traction that certain movements can have uh, on people that certain names or certain crafts can have, and and, and uh, you will soon uh, hear uh, hear about it because our next launch that we I think it's scheduled for the 17th of October, which is two weeks down the uh, two weeks down from now, is, is is a signature movement is what most of the people consider as the king of movements in complication. And we want to play around this. So we, we, we have this project of a tourbillon that will hit the market um, soon. And um, while we don't do things like everybody else, as you know, and the value proposition is going to be quite unprecedented. Uh, so we want to offer this access, not just to the names, but also to the, the complications. I would love to, you know, roll out uh, from tourbillon over minute repeater to other things. Uh, but also, why not some historical movements, some, some movements that... That, that marked, imprinted the history of watchmaking and, and, and just reinvent them or not mess, not reinvent them, in this particular case, recase them uh, into different newer stories. So we have a lot of projects, some of them, uh, and, and I must say my product pipeline today is about 50 pieces, uh, which at the rhythm we launch, which is quite substantial of six, seven, 
seven launches or sometimes more a year would say nine years. So in the last three years, we did nine years of product uh, pipeline. Not all of them going to hit the market, but, but just to give you an understanding how far ahead and how diverse and how, um, I would say, in how much categories we think we can develop the brand. I have a question for Johnny to wrap all of this really interesting conversation up together. But before, I just got a message here uh, on my WhatsApp from one of our collectors saying they feel so special about having acquired some of the limited editions. But sometimes he feels the launches may be a bit too many, maybe in a year or in a, in, in, in the, in a number of of years. So where do you see the, the fine balance with, with that eventually? It, it, it's a good question. I think we, we, we have the chance that we can accelerate and decelerate depending on the market, depending on how we evolve. I, I don't think there's a, a right number or a wrong number. Um, maybe it's a bit, a lot right now. That's also due to a certain number of different factors and, and some delays and some issues we faced post-COVID. Um, so, so there's maybe a bit of a, or a bit of a more than, than less, but don't forget, don't forget one thing. We, 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 we only produce 4,000 watches a year and, uh, these limited editions or collaborations, we're talking 178, which by the way, has a meaning. And for Metida, we're talking about 99 pieces. So we need to have a certain amount to, 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 to cover the, the, this, uh, 4,000 and, uh, I will tell you a story. The four thousand is not is is a, is a number that comes also from a logic. Um, to, we try to do things with with a logic with a lot of logic, and the logic is that I want to be independent, not just as an independent watch brand, but independent uh, uh, in all sense of the word. And the first first and foremost element of independence is, is financial independence. Yeah, um, so I don't think sustainable, you, sustainable self-sustainable, because that gives you the guarantee that you can do what you want, the way you want it, and not being not have to compromise. Yeah. Um, and we have a small team, small but beautiful team. But I need to sell uh, about a thousand five hundred watches a year to um, cover all my costs, cover all my organization, all my developments. Um, and I do that. So I, I, I basically decided to cap my online sales on the number of watches I need to cover my organization. But as I'm a strong believer of a balanced uh, system, I, I don't think that the brand can sustain by only direct sales. I think it's important to, to be balanced because your partners are also what gives you credibility, uh, what gives you uh, visibility, what, are, what creates touch points. And I said to my, I said from the beginning, we want to have a balanced uh, uh, logic, 50% online, 50% through a selected network of partners. And obviously, the margin being the margin we have to give, including to you, obviously, Pietro. <laughs> Sorry, as a hint. Um, we need to produce a little bit more watches for wholesale to keep that balance of, of, course. Uh, of, of, course. of, of uh, 50. 50. So the 2,500, which leads me to the, to, to the 4,000, basically, is the 50% that I, I, I allocate to, the, to, um, mm. to my partners, whether they are uh, traditional, classical, AAA retailers, or maybe some in more innovative or more different approaches to how to, 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 you know, how to yeah. distribute, how to, um, how to promote uh, watch brands. So you could have sold thousands of time eaters one. You only uh, you repeated the experience with the time eater two, and you still kept it very limited to 178 per piece. Can we re-explain the importance of the 178? As you said, every number has a logic. Well, look, I could have. I think there's about 7,000 people who registered for the watch. Um, <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, there's quite a lot, which. Which we happily <laughs> leave open as join the watch list gives us a bit of interesting information. Anyway, the the 178 actually comes from a pretty uh, basic logic. When when I was launching um, this idea, I thought to myself, okay, uh, you know, I'm I'm a collector myself. I like this idea of something exclusive, um, and I don't want this big numbering. And I understood that 
on a brand like Louis R, 100 pieces are just not viable. Uh, the whole development, the whole uh, research, the whole uh, everything that is put into the watch just doesn't cover the cost of the 100. And I found that from 250 onwards, somehow it was just two big numbers. So I was looking for a number that could tell a story between 100 and 250. And I came across this, this uh, 178, which, which basically means, uh, in, 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 in Chinese, it means Ichifa, I think. Uh, and, and I don't take took the Chinese because of any commercial logic, simply because it, it just, these are figures that talk, and, and, and it means pretty much translated something like being strong together, uh, being prosperous together. And I think this is the idea of a collaboration. This should be the idea of a collaboration. It should be bringing something more, and they should be benefiting both parties. And this is why I chose this figure. John, it's been uh, amazing. We've been uh, we've been entertained. We've been uh, uh, thoroughly enjoying the journey. We have learned as well a lot in discovering, you know, new makers, new uh, um, métiers d'art uh, artisans. Um, we have been uh, uh, pitching Luera as the best introduction at an affordable, pocketable pr price to independent watchmaking, and uh, it sounds like uh, all the all the ingredients are there for for a bright uh, a bright future for for the brand as well. Completely. Um, uh, firstly, I'd just like to say this is emphatically not as it described on the tin. This uh, episode uh, went in a completely different direction, uh, but it was fascinating. And it leads me to think that, uh, Manuel, we should go back and look over each of the different uh, <laughs> collections within, within uh, the Louis Erard because there's some fascinating stories there. And uh, so to, 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 to understand the whole uh, psychology behind the, uh, the brand, where it is now, where it's going in the future, you said an intriguing thing that was, so you're only, you've only employed maybe a few, a small percentage of the ideas that are going around. You're talking about a, a signature movement that we're maybe looking forward to seeing in another few weeks. And uh, and who, who knows? We love, we love these closing little uh, hints. Uh, well, yeah. as you know, Manuel. <laughs> I, I, I'm closing. sitting here, listen, yeah. where I, you know me, Pietro, I always love to get my two cents in, like, you know, and uh, I'm sitting here and just loving the conversation. I'm just finding it so interesting. And uh, so uh, definitely, Manuel, we need to do this again sometime, line up some, uh, okay. some images a little bit more relevant to the conversation. And uh, but um, so tell us to close off then the time eight or two. Is it uh, sold out or what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, um, we, 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 we had a few um, quite unpleasant discussions in the last 48 hours with some of oh. our partners which were complaining about the lack of, 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 of information on when we deliver. And I told them, look, uh, I, I, I like, to, I like to, to keep it simple. And I like to, and I have a very, very good team. And my, 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 the person who takes care of all the, the, the let's say, of, 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 of trying to filter all this is the same that does the deliveries and prepares everything. So he has been struggling with like over, I think, 25,000 emails and, 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 and just people going crazy about the watch. And it's just trying to keep his head up. And we obviously said we deliver as, as, as quickly as possible first. And I think this is understandable, people who order directly. And then we, we go into the allocations and support that we give to retailers. But, but, but it just takes time. It, it, it does. Sorry to cut you there, but that's another credit to you, Manuel, because we've been involved with many, also uh, many, a few collaborations, and I know how hard it is actually to come to launch day with actually the watches available to be delivered. It's a massive plus compared to what you see normally yeah. in the market in the form of subscriptions, for example. So that that's that's yeah, that's not easy to. I would never launch a product that is not ready. Okay, so the 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 three hundred and fifty six pieces were ready. Uh, maybe not 356 because there's always a bit of a, um, and a good luckily enough we have a very very low rejection rate and very low quality problems because we really pay a lot of attention to that and spend a lot of time in making things right or making the right thing before we launch it and um, most of the products are available but then again there's one 
as uh, as uh, Ellie uh, just wrote on uh, one of the message, Rene is the boss. Rene is really the boss. I mean, he's he's the he's the one who who struggles with all this, and he does his utmost to to try to to service everybody on time. Uh, and sometimes things take a bit longer, and it's quite interesting to see the more exciting the product is, the less understanding. And the less uh, comprehensive our partners are when it comes to the day of delivery. So we, we should be able to have everything done within the next 10, 10 12 days. Sometimes it's also on us that sometimes we, because we are very passionate about what we do, we create a, a expectations, we create, create a hype that goes beyond what we actually uh, can, can manage sometimes. And then we deal with the consequences. But... Uh, which is the, the work of you know firefighters and always trying to keep uh, things yeah. under control is become a, it's become the most important I, I guess uh, these days. But, but you see see I think I think what's very interesting with Luyar is it's scalable. Okay. Um, I mean we we are we don't have the same limitations that some of the high end watch brands might have because of the capacity of its watchmakers or creators to produce. Uh, movements or watches, we we could scale it, but, but but I think scale is something that has to be based on desirability, on 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 traction, and not on so basically on 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 pull and not on push. So for the time being, we 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 have no interest, or we're not interested in pushing anything. We're interesting. We're interested just to sustain and build and and build this this this. You know, this project, um, this ecosystem, this platform, this laboratory, this label, and then maybe a brand. I'm not a big fan of this world brand, but anyway, yeah. this, this this unique uh, approach. Before we we maybe consider to to go one step further, but to, but today uh, this is not of no interest because again we are we are lucky enough that we are sustainable and self sustainable, which means we don't need to run after uh, business uh, or development. We, 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 we can, as I just say, egocentrically, we can do it our way, you know? And uh, I think this is very important. This was uh, so precious, Manuel. Thank you very much. I think, like Johnny suggested, we, we're gonna rename this episode as a tutorial on how to, uh, you know, to implement a successful watchmaking operation uh, in, a, in, a, in an intelligent and brilliant and sustainable way. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm being honest. I know you, we are friends, Manuel, but uh, give you credit for this really valuable time you spent with us. I know there's lots of people that will take a lot of uh, interest in uh, in watching this episode, which will uh, will be available from now on as a recorded version. Uh, I thank Johnny for being with us today, Johnny, for the uh, 1,500 time. We don't we don't stop. We never stop bringing the interesting people from the incredible world of independent watchmaking. And Manuel today was no exception. It's been fantastic. A, a really, really enjoyable. As I say, usually Pietro, as you know, we have uh, lots of images to illustrate our conversation, but uh, today uh, it was just uh, really uh, amazing. And there were a lot of lessons learned there. I picked up one or two things as well uh, from this and uh, that <laughs> I applied in my own life. Uh, Don't launch too many brands, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep you promoting us, not making your own story. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Johnny, John, a new brand, Johnny, could be could be an idea. You never know. They want to find show you my sketch pad here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't Gentlemen. look that good. Don't worry, watch word. Thank I'm not about to do that to you. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. And maybe we may see Louis Arr next year at the Festival of Time. You never know. Am I, oh, am look, I... Uh, if, if if you tell me to come, I'll be there. Uh I might be very happy. I mean, I like to you know, it's an environment that I like to to. Uh, they're friends. I mean, I don't I don't do the collaborations. None of the collaborations I ever did are, 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 are have been initiated by a pure commercial logic. I mean, Alain, because because the, as I told you, but also I think Alain has had a certain run after this uh, collaboration, and I'm very happy for him because I think he's somebody that unfortunately uh, has not been given the credit that he should have had. Uh, and, I'm, uh, and he had a very nice run in lately, and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm happy for this. Uh, Vianney has been always a, a friend uh, and, and know him for years, and I just appreciate the the, the, the character and the 
well, I don't know if independence is enough, but I would say the, 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 the you know, this kind of free spirit uh, logic. And uh, and Constantine over years, uh, being also a bit active in this part of the world, has has become um, you know a friend, and and I and I just have an enormous admiration for his capacity uh, to invent, to create, um, knowing that he's a pure autodidact, that he didn't ever study watchmaking in the school, uh, and that unfortunately a lot of people know him for. His uh, wrist mumps, but but what he what he has in 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 his mind and sometimes on his workbench are just incredible creations. We just uh, had today I, I a do. cinema a cinema watch here, and yeah. I can say that yeah, carpet DM that... for me was just it, it blew me away the first time I ever yeah. saw it. And I actually do think, Manuel, that uh, Constantine is uh, one of the very greatest inventors yeah. of orangery that who has ever lived anywhere. I, I believe. that. I, I agree, and his, his his story, his situation, and how and where and which context he does his creations even adds on to the to to, to what makes him unique. And you know, uh, sometimes it's frustrating because uh, I take this advantage to just say, uh, use this little platform to say, first of all, congratulations, uh, Pietro, for your nomination as jury. We oh, we love thank you. <laughs> thank you. We love to hear we love to hear that people like you are in the jury because we need. The, defend, the, the defense, defenser and defenders of the independence. Um, but also, uh, I, I was always, I was pretty much shocked when I when I saw his clock. He, he did one of incredible clock. Didn't even make it into the end selection. I mean, it's just, just sometimes, sometimes uh, you, you you see that there's still a lot of things to discover. There's a whole world of of, of creativity, of innovation, of of of, of competences of crafts that I think need to be need to be talked about and if I can uh, put a little contribution on my little side with, with, with Louis R to, to, to put the spotlight uh, on, on some people on some crafts I'm very very happy to do so because at the end of the day first and foremost I'm passionate about watch making I'm collecting watches myself um, and I just I just love what yeah. and, and what I, a gift and what a gift to, to enjoy what you absolutely which absolutely. happens to us every, every day and we we are grateful and never take it for granted um guys it's been uh, again an absolute pleasure uh Manu, thank you for your time thank you very uh, much Pedro. thank you very much johnny and everyone and much online pleasure and okay. Yeah, and Eli, uh, I you know what I'm laughing at, Eli. I cannot possibly publish that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you all, and uh, we'll see, yeah. see you we'll see you very Bye. soon uh, with uh, Manuel. I hope uh, very soon for another another episode, and uh, there will be more watchmakers next week on this channel. So keep uh, keep giving us the love. We really fully truly appreciate it. Take care. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.